We operate as a team in general. Most of what we've done is aimed at just gathering information about how we're doing with robotic procedures. One caveat that I feel strongly about is that in general, just because there's a sense out there that minimally invasive is all, maybe better for most operations, it can be misleading or wrong. And you do continue, you need to continually evaluate, I think, new technologies in any approach, and that includes the robot. Why robotics over standard MIS? It's a very elegant, nice instrument, probably the best MIS instrument that we have at this point as far as its capabilities. But does it make sense? It has high costs and as yet really unproven benefit. There are no studies that prove that the robot is better over standard MIS techniques. It's really driven by marketing, really not by evidence. And it's a choice on an institutional and I think a personal level. Do you want to ignore the new technology? It's because there's no obvious evidence out there or partake in the evaluation process and bring the technology perhaps to its next level. It's an individual standpoint, maybe an institutional standpoint. Our personal standpoint at Memorial has been to take this as a more from an academic event than start a developmental program looking at robotic applications to general thoracic procedures with the goals of developing an academic program around investigation and, and important for us is teaching these uh, general thoracic surgical procedures, so incorporating it into robotic training and dissemination of the experience and findings in appropriate academic forums and such as this is one just to get the information out there. So what are we doing with robotic surgery at MSK? Just about everything, and you've seen all the operations, you've seen different reports from pulmonary resections, uh, standard lobectomy is probably the most common, but segmentectomy, sleeve resections, which we've appro approached as well. Mediastinum, robotic thymectomy, which is probably the sort of uh, epitome of the operation that the robot's really taken to as, as far as avoiding a sternotomy. Posterior mediastinal resections, esophageal resections, uh, which uh, we do as a, an advanced esophageal center. It's not just uh, cancer that we take care of. We take care of just about any advanced esophageal procedure. This is a technique of robotic-assisted minimally invasive esophagectomy that we've developed at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. Uh, for brevity's sake, I'll refer to it as RAMI, R-A-M-I-E. It does require a fair amount of instrumentation. The room set up as seen here for the abdominal phase, and this is an Ivor Lewis or McEwen setup for the abdominal phase with the robotic cart coming directly over the patient's head, and then for the thoracoscopic phase with the robotic cart coming over the patient who is in straight lateral left to cubitus position with the right side up and the robotic cart coming over uh, the right shoulder at an oblique angle. The port placement within the chest, as shown here, our initial or standard VATS camera placement within the eighth or ninth intercostal space in the posterior axillary line, an additional set of eight millimeter port sites in approximately the fifth intercostal space in the posterior axillary line, as well as an additional eight uh, millimeter uh, incision for the eight millimeter left hand of the robotic instrument in the line with the scapular tip in approximately the tenth interspace posteriorly. An additional five millimeter port is placed in approximately the third or fourth interspace, again in the posterior axillary line, and a, an assistant port placed uh, just over the diaphragm between the camera port and the posterior eight millimeter port. And again, the trajectory of the robotic cart is over the right shoulder. Within the abdomen, a similar set of ports uh, is performed with a forearm, again, robotic cart. The camera is brought through the umbilicus. The right and left eight millimeter ports are placed uh, in the mid right and left abdomen as shown. A five millimeter port is placed uh, along the costal angle in the left side for the uh, five millimeter robotic assistant arm and an additional contralateral five millimeter port is placed on the right costal angle for the liver retractor. An additional assistant port is placed in the right uh, just infra umbilical region uh, for a 15 or 12 millimeter port for the uh, bedside assistant to pass staplers as well as for suctioning and additional graspers. The retrogastric dissection uh, involves complete retrogastric lymph node dissection, skeletonizing the splenic artery as well as a 
D one and a half or D two dissection with partial skeletonization of the hepatic artery as well. All lymph nodal tissue is taken up along with the left gastric pedicle, which is then ligated uh, with a surgical stapler. The greater curve of the stomach is dissected uh, along the elemental uh, planes with uh, preservation of the vascular arcade and then gastric conduit formation is performed uh, much as in an open case with uh, staples devices to form a gastric tube approximately five centimeters in width. Again, the fourth arm uh, allows for uh, retraction of the stomach in a very gentle fashion with atraumatic graspers. Pyloroplasty, if the surgeon uh, performs one, is performed in standard fashion and is greatly aided by the ability of the robot's uh, suturing, uh, as seen here. This is otherwise a standard pyloroplasty that is done in much the same way as you would an open operation. The anastomosis is performed with an EEA stapler by first transecting the esophagus above the azygous vein, placing the anvil within the esophagus and performing a purse string suture. Uh, which again is aided by the dexterity that the articulated instruments of the robotic arms allow. A second purse string is placed for reinforcement. The stapler married uh, to the anvil and the uh, stapler fired uh, to complete the anastomosis. I'm going to get talk a little bit about giant parasophageal hernia repair as an operation that uh, is probably portable to most uh, general thoracic surgeons. Why do we operate on these patients and what are the clinical presentations? Uh, you know, from the sort of classic paper by Skinner, 21% of these patients that he saw did progress to strangulation of the stomach, hence the dictum by thoracic surgery and the American Board of Thoracic Surgery to operate on every single patient with a giant hiatal hernia. Whether everyone agrees on that, I think you need to use your own clinical judgment to decide who needs an operation, but that is the standard uh, recommendation from the American Board of Thoracic Surgery. And if they leak, you end up with either a laparotomy or a thoracotomy and probably at least a 20 to 30 percent mortality rate. The thoracic approach uh, is a, an open thoracotomy and it works just fine. It's a terrific operation and actually it set the gold standard for how this operation should be done. 94 patients operated on by uh, Pearson who kept very good records of all of his patients and followed them closely through a left thoracotomy, sac excision with a collis whether if it was needed and 91 percent patient reported good results, 9% with fair results. So 90% or plus more patients said, I'd do this again. At a mean fall of 10 years and only two operations were required and, and this operation is hard to argue that you can beat this operation. The patients did great and it's an open operation, thoracotomy or not. But what if you can do it minimally invasive uh, with good results? Any new technology has to recapitulate, I think, the gold standard results uh, at least as closely as possible unless there's some really terrific benefit from it. Over 600 patients now operated by uh, Lukatich where I, where I trained, did part, part of my training uh, and uh, learned this operation from him. This is a, about a decade experience and 30-day mortality was low, less than 2% and again 90% excellent to good results and the reoperation rate was about 3%. So again compatible with the gold standard open series and you could argue that this should pretty much replace the thoracotomy as the gold standard for repair of giant uh, parasophageal hernia. That's a, a personal standpoint, but it's one argument to consider. So you have to decide for yourself where the benefit is and what you think the indications are for using this, this tool.